This is Ultim 9085, and I printed it on my Bamboo Lab H2D. That's right, Ultim, Ultim 9085. It's a blend of PEI or polyethemeride. You know, it's that thing that a lot of us have on our build plates that we print onto. It's also something we can print with if you have your settings correct. And I printed it on the Bamboo Lab H2D, but we really need to talk about how I did it and whether I should do it and whether you should do it. Let's dive right in. Before we explore this, don't forget 3D Printing Nerd Studios powered by PCBWay, 8% off, link in the description. You know what to do! I was working with the H2D and I was printing a bunch of stuff and I was cleaning up while it was printing and I ran across this. This is 3DX Tech's Thermax PEI. It is an Ultim 9085 blend in it's it's great. It's it's a natural color. That's what it looks like. But I started looking at the label. Temperature 350 to 380 C and bed temp 140 to 160 C. This prints really hot, really, really hot. I was looking at this number and then I looked at my Bamboo Lab H2D and I thought, well, the nozzle on this thing now goes to 350 C and the bed will go to 120 C. The chamber goes to 65 C, which is a little little bit low for this and I thought well, what the heck why don't why don't we try this what do we got to lose I stuck this spool in my AMS HT and I dried it at 85 C which is its maximum overnight just because I wanted to have the best chance possible now drying this material it's suggested to go even hotter than that but again I'm trying this all on the H2D, that wonderful machine that was released not that long ago with some really cool specs. So I, I, I dried it as much as I could, and then I put it in the machine, and I loaded up a model. This pond, it's the Chep Pond. It's a simple model, it's an easy shape, but it can tell you whether or not you're dialed in correctly. To attempt this properly, I decided to slather on the nanopolymer adhesive from Vision Miner. Fish and Miner are the high temp people. They know exactly what to do with all of these incredible industrial high temp materials and their 22 IDEX V3 is an incredible machine capable of printing these because its nozzle goes to 500 C and above, the bed goes to 200 C, but they'll tell you it'll reach 300 C and the chamber you can heat to 110 C. That machine, this stuff, those people, they know high temp. And so I took this and I just slathered it all over the textured PEI Bamboo Lab sheet for the H2D and I crossed my fingers. It went and went until it didn't. And this is what I was left with, this really expensive failure. One of the things that people don't necessarily realize about material such as Ultim 9085 is that it's rather expensive. For a 500 gram spool, which is what this is, you're paying close to 150 US dollars. Yeah, it's pricey. Its characteristics dictate that it's worth the price if you can print it right. This is not printed right. Round two, I'm using the smooth PEI sheet from Bamboo Lab in the H2D. And again, I slathered the nanopolymer adhesive onto that sheet because it's what you should do when attempting this. And I crossed my fingers. Hold on to your butts. And that is how I got this shape, this incredible pawn printed in Ultum 9085 3DX Tech's Thermax PEI. I was astounded. Now, one of the things that we have to talk about is the proper printing of these sorts of materials. And you can't just throw it in any machine, make it go and expect to get the material properties that this material carries. We're kind of at the low end here with the H2D. Remember, the H2D specs, 350 on the nozzle, that's the maximum, 120 on the bed, that's the maximum. 65C in the chamber, that is the maximum. 380 is what is recommended for this, and the bed temp of 140 to 160 is kind of what's recommended here. So we're already on the low end. And what happens when you don't print at the suggested temperatures and you're just barely squeaking by, you lose a lot of the mechanical properties of the material, such as the layer bonding. The layer bonding in this material is fantastic if you can print it right from the beginning. So this pawn with Ultim 9085 
is just a decorative piece. I wouldn't trust the mechanical properties of this because I was printing with temperatures much lower than what is recommended. I thought, let's go for broke. It's loaded, it's dry, and I seem to, according to this pawn, have myself a set of settings that works. And so I threw in the bench heat. I threw it in there and I hit print. And it was starting to look good until it wasn't. This is a Benchy, but it's suffering the problems that you usually get when you print this sort of material at temperatures that are too low. You get layer separation. And it's just... Ew. This is sad. This is really sad. My Benchy fell apart. So was this a successful test? Let's just, let's just consider that. The maximum nozzle heat, bed heat, and chamber heat come close to the minimum for the engineering grade material that is Ultim 9085. And while I was able to print something successfully, that pawn, the Benchy did in fact fail. This is where we really have to talk about printing engineering grade materials properly because there are machines coming out on the market right now that claim to print things like Ultim and Peak and Peck. And YGK3D actually looked at one of these machines from LA Archie claiming it could print Peak. But again, there were issues with the print and I'll, I'll link his video down below because it was fantastic. I highly suggest you take a look at it. Just because you can extrude a plastic and get the nozzle hot enough doesn't mean you're properly printing the material. So when we explore, should you print this? with an H2D or whatever. Yeah, I mean, if you if you want, but at the end of the day, your parts aren't gonna be functional, they're gonna be decorative. And who's gonna pay hundreds of dollars a kilogram for a decorative chest set made from a material? I, I don't think any of us. Nope. That's not to say that all really cool industrial materials are out of reach of these consumer level 3D printers. I think that stuff like PPS. PPS CF from Polymaker from their Fibron series is a wonderful material. And after you print it, it is, I believe, semi-crystalline and you can get yourself a Benchy that looks like that. And one of the properties is you get a metallic ting. It's, it's metallic. That's why Polymaker at their booths have a bell made in this PPS CF because it tings like a metal. And, and, and finally, I just, I wanna give a shout out to Vision Miner because they are the high temp printing experts. They're who I turn to when I have questions. Rob over at Vision Miner is who I text late at night sometimes because I have a question and if he doesn't know the answer, he'll go to the text and then they work a solution. I did load up my 22 IDEX V3 with this 3DX tech material and I printed a Benchy and, and, uh, and and there it is, look at that. The smokestack was a little suspect though because you have a lot of thermal mass at the top and when you're printing something at such a high temperature, it takes a long time for that thermal mass to cool down. So if you want a better chimney on your benchy, print more benchies to give more time between layers and, and that allows it to cool down a little bit better. At the end of the day, I want you to experiment. I want you to play around. I, wa I want you to find some inspiration in this and, and go to your machine and maybe Try something a little hotter, maybe maybe extrude a little wider, maybe get that bed cooking a little bit more, maybe play with some materials, just have some fun. Not that these engineering grade materials are gonna be available for everyone to test, but who knows what the future holds, who knows what manufacturers are gonna be extruding and offering for sale or who's gonna have what samples. And uh, that's it, just go have some fun out there. I'm glad you made it this far. If you did, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more, fight for a cause you believe in, and print all the high-temp things. And as always, high five.